Welcome back. Let's continue here now. Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnagagwa has won a second term and final term in office in an outcome rejected by the opposition and questioned by observers. Mnagagwa, who took over from longtime leader Robert Mugabe after a 2017 army coup, was widely expected to secure re-election despite the country's continuing economic crisis. The elections were marred by reports of fear-mongering with both SADC and the EU election observers saying that the vote did not meet international standards and was conducted in a climate of fear. To discuss the role of election observers, we are now joined by the founder of the Institute of Election Management Services in Africa, Terry Tselane. Mr. Tselane, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Just walk us through some of the developments that we have been seeing in this election. For the first time, of course, SADC coming out very harshly against the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, saying that the uh, way in which they conducted the election was really sub par uh, and obviously shedding uh, much light in terms of, uh, you know, were these elections free and fair? Just talk to us about, you know, what that actually means and the role of observers in, in general. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me and good afternoon to your uh, viewers. Um, the observers play, uh, play a very important role in the electoral process. They are playing almost a role of uh, auditors. In other words, their role is to go through the process, observe every aspect of the electoral process from the time when uh, registration starts uh, to the time when political parties start campaigning until uh, the announcements of the results of the election. And therefore, their opinion is important and cannot just be ignored. And it is therefore uh, unprecedented in the case of Zimbabwe for the election observers uh, to issue the kind of the statements that they've actually issued. And then basically, they are saying that uh, the there, there were a number of irregularities, and those irregularities are such that um, they cannot ignore them, and that um, they feel that uh, those irregularities may have had an impact uh, on the electoral process and the outcome of the results of the election. Now, of course, we know that the main opposition party is challenging these results and it will be holding a press briefing uh, in, in a few moments time, we are told. What are the avenues some of these uh, political parties can take, especially those that are opposed to the way in which the election was handled, particularly if they are weighing some of their arguments to what we've been hearing from these observer missions? Well, firstly, there should be sufficient material uh, coming from the election observers, uh, as I've indicated that uh, some of them, in fact, have already identified the irregularities in terms of the way the elections uh, were managed. And then that information is going to be critical if uh, the political parties decide to uh, take a legal route. And I think the legal route is the only viable option available at this stage uh, for the political parties that feel disaffected uh, by uh, the announcement of the results of these elections. Uh, Mr. Tarani, just to go back to, you know, what some of them said in terms of the weight in which they have placed some of their observations. I mean, uh, both SADC and the EU election observers are saying that the vote did not meet international standards and was conducted in a climate of fear. Can they really find that these elections then were free and fair? And, and, and if so, if, um, if they don't, what, what are the next steps, particularly as it relates to the, the, the President Nangangwa, who has won the election? Well, I'm sure from the side of uh, the supporters of the ZANU-PF, uh, they will be uh, well, they, they will welcome the outcome of the results and they'll be happy about the outcome. Uh, but naturally, those who are not happy with the outcome of the results of the election, uh, they will pursue other avenues to try to make sure that uh, they challenge uh, the outcome. And as I've indicated already, uh, th there seems to be sufficient material uh, thus far to support um, you know whatever avenue that they're going to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, in electoral processes, uh, there are four aspects that are so important. One, which is uh, one you've already mentioned, it is a creation of environment conducive uh, to free and fair elections. 
Now, if that climate does not exist, it means uh, that um, obviously that would have an effect uh, in terms of the way the process uh, is managed and um, as well as the, on the outcome of the results of the election. But the second aspect is really at the level of uh, the logistics, the management of the logistics of the elections. If the logistics are managed such that it is not possible uh, for all the participants in the elections to receive the materials at the right time, right amount, um, you know, it, it, it really uh, affects the, the effect and the quality of the elections. You know, so some of those uh, mistakes and irregularities were so glaring in these elections to the extent that they could not be ignored by the election observers. Mm -hmm. But the third one is probably the, the quality of the voters' role and making sure that there is transparency in terms of making sure that people receive the voters' role on time and that voters' role should contain only the names of those who are eligible to participate in the elections. And there appear to have been some difficulties in terms of even that particular aspect uh, during these elections. And of course, as South Africa heads to the elections uh, next year, what are some of the key lessons, if any, uh, from these Zimbabwe elections? Firstly, it is the creation of environment conducive to a free political activity, making sure that all uh, political parties and individuals who will be participating as independents uh, have equal access uh, to the media and that there are no uh, so-called no-go areas uh, for anyone who wants to participate in the election. But the Electoral Commission itself has got a major responsibility in terms of making sure that uh, the logistics of the elections are such that um, every person who wants to participate in the elections is able to participate in the elections without any hindrance. Uh, so hopefully the Electoral Commission of South Africa uh, will be watching this and making sure that uh, all other uh, aspects that uh, matter to these elections uh, do not actually uh, become a problem in 2024 when South Africa is headed to the polls. Absolutely. Mr. Zelani, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate it. Uh, that's uh, Terry Zelani there, and he is the founder of the Institute of Election Management Services in Africa.